Oh. <laughs> hey, Bonnet Dukes. Come Bonnet, on. Bonnet Dukes, hey. <laughs> so, Lou, uh, Mark held up an album before, and uh, you had wanted to speak about some album covers or something, didn't you? Yes, I did. And it was a particular, as a photographer, um, as I skip over to my notes here, um, a photographer by the name of Henry Diltz. Henry Diltz, I've seen his name many times yep. on records. Yep. Now, let me find my, my stuff here. Yeah. So, yeah, um, he's still around. Um, he has photographed over 250 classic album covers. But I got to tell you, in researching this, it was hard for me to find the titles of the album covers. Everything is it's just a big mush of uh, promotional photos he's taken because he's done portraits of a lot of people as well. But yeah. um, I, was trying to, I was trying to find some of the iconic album covers that he actually did. It's not easy. Um, but uh, he started out as a folk musician. He was in the uh, Modern Folk Quartet. They were, they were a, in the early 60s, they were a, a music folk revival band. And, but they were ended up being produced by Phil Spector and Jack Nitschke. He's done other things I can't off the top of my head now. But, yep. so, but you know, they were actually kind of fusing, I mean, it was post-Dylan too, fusing electric instruments with that kind mm-hmm. of more of a rock feel. Um, but they didn't, apparently they couldn't quite capture their sound like on record as well. They were commercially not very successful. So, you know, they did a certain thing and split up. Uh, there's a couple side roads on there because some of the people that have played with them went on to other things. Um, but um, so, so he was also a folk musician. I believe he was a banjo player. And because he was friends with the guys in America and photographed their album covers, or um, which ones I don't know, I think um, whatever ones has a photograph because he did a lot of artwork and stuff. And Phil well, Hartman well, did a couple well, that, albums. Well, that's a good point America because, albums, so. you know, he, he, a lot of albums were gatefold and there were lots of pictures on these yeah. gatefold thing, he could have taken a lot of the photos and maybe not even it, had them covered, it, right? Exactly, and even yeah. things like you know, Rolling Stone, Crow Daddy, whatever, whatever magazines were, were current at the time. Sure, yeah, yep. Um, so, but um, also, he's the banjo player on "Don't Cross the River" by America. Wow. Yeah, and if you see wow. on YouTube, there's a couple of Latter Day concerts where they bring him up and he plays, and he sounds great. Uh, so cool. Yeah. Um, cool dude. You know, he's in the uh, you see the Eagles history of the Eagles documentary. He's in there. He's got a good good segment of it because he, he photographed them out in the desert when they were doing um, peyote. The first, was it the first uh, album? The Desperado shots. Uh, I believe he should. Whatever. The first album, Eagles album, doesn't. Is, that's not a photograph. Yeah, the back has them the sitting back. in the desert. It's probably uh, him. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's also him, um, you know, with the, uh, the Desperado album covers when they're all laying dead on the ground with Jackson Brown and J.D. Souther. Um, he yep. did all that stuff. Um, but he also, I mean, James Taylor, Sweet Baby James. Um hmm. Yeah, so he actually became more of note um, as, as a photographer than a musician. But he did got to meet some of the monkeys and photograph them as well. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see here. So here's some actually ones that he did photograph and other things. Uh, Morrison Hotel. I mean, he did over 250 album covers, and I'm wondering. Wait, wait, Morrison Hotel, kind of re- he, he did the cover. He shot yeah, yeah, that. that the, the, he the, shot yeah, the, Wow, that's a great yeah. one. And he's a co-founder of the Morrison Hotel uh, Gallery. There's one in Soho. And Los Angeles, and it's got a lot of his works in there, so I'm sure a lot of his album covers are on there. And I, all the nudes I, uh... that he shot. Um, <laughs> the Eagles' Desperado. Uh, yeah. Chris Christopherson, but the album, if it's an album, I don't know. Um, James Taylor, Sweet Baby James, that's his uh, cover, photograph on the cover of that. Cool. Uh, he did Kenny Rogers, Neil Young, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, A Lot of America, Jackson Brown, Steppenwolf. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, The Monkees. He actually... I think he might have even played on a couple of monkey songs, but I don't know what they were. Um, he photographed Dolly Parton portraits, Garth Brooks. Um, so he's gone into the modern day. Um, he was the official photographer of the Monterey Pop Festival and Woodstock. That's big. That's big. Wow. Uh, and he was, but he wasn't. You know, I don't think he, when he started, he didn't claim to be like you know. I went out to be. He didn't set out to become a photographer. He's just he's an artist by nature. So he, you know, his, his eyes lent itself to. Yeah, it. yeah. But um, when I started looking at the um, the modern folk quartet. Ever hear of the name, uh, what is it called? Chip Douglas. Yeah, Chip Douglas. Yeah. Uh, I know, you know who him he as is. A, yeah. Okay, so you know him as a, as a producer? Chip Douglas and a songwriter, too. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, there was a, was it, now, John Voigt's brother, is it Chip Taylor? Chip Taylor, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, so, uh, Chip but Douglas Chip was Douglas a bass yeah. Yeah, uh, player and a producer. So out of the Modern Folk Quartet, he ended up producing... Uh, the Monkees um, and the Turtles, Happy Together, he produced that. And Pleasant Valley Sunday, amongst other things. By uh, One of my favorite monkey the Monkees songs, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. Carol King, and, um, Jerry Goffin. Right, so in relation to that, 
Um, no, actually, um, and Chip Douglas also introduced the monkeys to John Stewart, who I didn't know wrote Daydream Believer. <laughs> so yes. John Stewart. Um, so Mark, in 1979 or 80, there's a song called um, uh, Gold by John Stewart. With Stevie Nicks, when the lights go down in the car, people out there turn the music in the gold. Yep. I think it's one of those 1979 or 80 singles. But um, no, never heard that. Okay, so John Stewart, I think, was one of the Kingston Trio. I think he was okay. not an original Kingston Trio, but he was well, in like okay. Phase Two or right. maybe even well, Phase Three. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So now, when I was reading about those Monkey songs, there's this drummer came up, and his name is Fast Eddie Ho, H O H. But you mentioned there's this contention between. Who played the drums on Hurdy Gurdy Man? Was it John Bonham or this other guy? And I think yeah. he's the other guy that claims to have. Been. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, but he's a good, he's a great drummer. He played on uh, Sunshine Superman Donovan album. That's not him on the single though. I wonder who played the drums on that song because it's cool. On what that's song? probably him on Atlantis. Um, on Sunshine what song? Superman. Sunshine cool. Superman. The, the single. Yeah. But I don't know who the drummer is. But um, he played with the Mamas and Eddie Ho played with the Mamas and the Papas at the Monterey Pop Festival. He did the super session with Al Cooper, Mike Bloomfield, and Stephen Stills. Yep. Uh, he was he was in a band with Gene Clark and Clarence White, but they never recorded it. They actually did things, and Gene Clark apparently just wigged out on it. But it never saw the light of day. Um, yeah. So, but he was on albums by Tim Buckley, uh, Lee Michaels, uh, the, the the Birds, the Bees, and the Monkeys. Super session. Graham Bond. He's the drummer with the Flying Burrito Brothers on the Gilded Palace of Sin. Wow. Oh, wow. That, that's fast, Eddie Ho. Apparently wow! Fast. Wow! That's my shit. <laughs> wow! Well, you know what? Just going back to Morrison Hotel, I heard yeah. when they did that that where they're in the window. Evidently, he was outside photographing. the The owner said no pictures, no pictures. So they somehow they distracted the owner or something. So they all posed for the picture and then they ran the hell out of there. Mm. Oh, I wow. can't see Jim Morrison running, being scared, but it must no, be no. fun, you know. <laughs> But if you look at the picture closely, just it does look like a rush picture. You know, like okay, huh. pose. Yeah. Okay, get out of there. You know? That's funny. Did uh, huh. did did Henry Diltz take that picture of uh, what was it? Were there uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash sitting on that couch in front of that old I house? I think that's him. That yeah. he took that photo. He took that photo, right? I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a documentary on him uh, a couple of years ago, like now, and he was taking a, a, a the same picture of David Crosby that he took with like a gun and a joint in his mouth or something like there's a famous wow. David Crosby photo that Henry Diltz took. And, uh, he's got like, I think it's Amongst a red, many. white and blue handgun and he's got a joint and, you know, wow. something like that. Yep. Yeah. I think we need to get a Henry Diltz tabletop book. Well, well, I, well, come to think of it, if you go to the, um, look online and stuff, he, he's got quite a few books out. And one of them mm. I think I want to get is, I think it's something about Southern California. Cause he was like the official photographer of the Laurel Canyon scene. Uh, he oh, mentioned yeah. that too. So we all seen those yeah. documentaries, and that was such a what a fertile time of music, though. And Absolutely. there's a lot. Of, there's yeah, there's early, a lot early of good, 70s, uh, man. There's a lot of good photography. Uh, Ringo has one out of all uh, the of pictures own, that Ringo own. took. <laughs> yeah, and Henry wow. uh, Henry Rollins has one as well oh. on his travails around the globe. Henry Rollins, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, Henry Dills is also a contributing photographer to the Henry Rollins show. Really oh, cool. Nice, yeah. nice tie-in, Perry. Yeah. Cool. There's that zeitgeist. <laughs> Zeitgeist, I love that word. Zeitgeist. It's what it's what's for dinner. <laughs> very cool, very cool. So, um, where do you want to go now, man? Well, I'll 